Good morning, everyone. Welcome, and thank you for joining us today at Mount Royal University's Springbank Campus, home of our internationally accredited aviation diploma program. I'd like to begin by acknowledging that Mount Royal University and its campuses are located in the traditional territories of the Nitsitapi, or Blackfoot, and the people of the Treaty 7 region in southern Alberta, which includes the Siksika, the Pagani, the Gainai, the Satina, the Larahe, Nakoda, and this land also is home to the Métis Nation. My name is Dr. Kelly Williams-Witt, and I'm the Dean of Mount Royal University's Faculty of Business and Communication Studies. And I'm going to be your MC for today. It's always a pleasure to take part in events that celebrate higher learning. We're fortunate to have distinguished guests from the University of Calgary, SAIT, Bow Valley College, Ambrose University, St. Mary's University, and of course, Mount Royal University. I would like to begin by inviting Minister Nicolaides to the podium to make an exciting announcement about targeted enrollment funding for post-secondary institutions in the Calgary region. Minister Nicolaides. Well, good morning, everyone, and um, uh, thank you, Dr. Williams Witt, for, for uh, being here this morning and for emceeing. And welcome to the uh, beautiful Springbank campus of Mount Royal University, uh, a great home to experiential learning and hands-on learning in high-demand uh, occupations. And uh, as well, I, for I forgot to mention, um, uh, as a a degree of an alumnus of Mount Royal University as well. It's always a pleasure to be back with Mount Royal. Of course, my very first post-secondary steps involved a year at Mount Royal University before uh, making my way over to, uh, to the U of C. So always a pleasure to be back with colleagues from Mount Royal University. Uh, I'm very pleased to be joined here today by Dr. Elizabeth Evans, Interim Provost and Vice President of Mount Royal University, Dr. Marie McTavish, Associate Dean of Business at, the Ambro at Ambrose University, Michael Crow, Vice President uh, Academic of Bow Valley College, Roy Dakin, Vice President of Corporate Services at SAIT, Dr. Tara Highland-Russell with St. Mary's University, and of course, uh, President and Vice Chancellor of the University of Calgary, Ed McCulley. This is indeed an exciting day and an exciting time for our province. No pun intended, but Alberta's economy is taking off. Whether in tech, film, film and television, agriculture, aviation, or oil and gas, wherever you look, there are strong signs of economic growth in our province. In fact, Alberta's economy is forecast to return to levels not seen since 2014, and many analysts are predicting that Alberta will lead the country in economic growth this year. This is in, uh, due in part to Alberta's recovery plan, a bold and ambitious plan to breathe new life into our economy, diversify, and create new opportunities for every Albertan. And it's within the context of Alberta's recovery plan that we developed Alberta 2030, a new 10-year strategic plan for our post-secondary system. From what I'm told, it's the first time in over a decade that Alberta has a comprehensive strategic vision for our post-secondary system. I won't go into the long details about the new 10-year strategic plan, but one of the key pillars of Alberta 2030 is to expand access and ensure every Albertan has the opportunity to access post-secondary education. Creating opportunities in post-secondary education is critical. It opens new doors for individuals, for families, helps them to aspire and reach new heights, and as well helps to strengthen our broader economy. And it's within the context of our rapid economic growth that we are experiencing, which not only creates opportunity, but also creates its own set of challenges. And one of these challenges that we're experiencing is the lack 
of skilled talent. Employers across the province are concerned about not being able to hire the staff that they need. In addition, students need to feel confident that they will be accepted into their chosen post-secondary program in their community. And as well, business and industry leaders need to have the right talent to meet regional workforce needs. Now, for the past few days, I've had the privilege of traveling across our province to share some exciting news that benefits students, employers, post-secondary institutions, and broader communities. Alberta's government is investing $171 million over three years to create what we hoped in the beginning was to be 7,000 post-secondary spaces, but that has turned out to be now almost 10,000 post-secondary spaces. This is, without question, the largest targeted enrollment expansion in Alberta's history. Last week, I had the honor of joining Premier Jason Kenney at the University of Calgary to announce new seats for their veterinary medicine program. I also traveled to Vermilion to share news about how our government is investing in higher learning in northeastern Alberta, supporting new seats in healthcare and other important programs in the region. And on Thursday, I was pleased to join post-secondary leaders in Edmonton to celebrate investments in the capital region. Now, under the targeted enrollment expansion initiative, all 26 publicly funded post-secondary institutions were invited to submit proposals to government to expand capacity in their high demand programs. Ultimately, we received more than 120 remarkable proposals from 23 institutions. These proposals, of course, were scored and evaluated uh, for accurate need. And that's what brings us here today. And I'm excited to be back in Calgary to share more news about how we are investing and allocating target enrollment funding to the city of Calgary. I'm very pleased to announce today an investment of more than 84 million in new funding to create 3,000 seats in high demand programs for the city of Calgary. <laughs> 3,000 seats will be allocated to Ambrose University, Bow Valley College, SAIT, St. Mary's University, the University of Calgary, and of course right here at Mount Royal University. Now, let me explain a little bit more about where this funding will be allocated. First and foremost, Ambrose University will receive 198,000 to create approximately 30 new seats in the Bachelor of Business Administration program. With respect to Bow Valley College, they will receive 4.6 million to create 366 new seats in six critical programs, including business administration, healthcare aid, practical nurse diploma, information technology systems, and software development, as well as uh, foundation in entertainment arts. St. Mary's University will receive approximately 148,000 to create 30 seats in the new social responsibility and critical entrepreneurship diploma program. SAIT will receive just over 10 million to create 607 new seats. Seats will be allocated in areas such as aircraft structures technician, aircraft maintenance engineers, avionics, film and video production, and business administration. With respect to the University of Calgary, 61 million will be allocated to the University of Calgary to create over 1,500 spaces in 12 critical programs. Approximately 200 spaces will be created in the Bachelor of Science in Software Engineering, additional spaces in the Bachelor of Science in Computer Science. 72 new seats will be allocated to the Bachelor of Nursing Rural and Indigenous Root Program and 150 seats for the Master of Engineering in Software Engineering. In addition to that, there will also be seats in the Master of Data Science and Analytics, Master of Information Security and Privacy, Bachelor of Science in Computer Science, and uh, additional seats in nursing, commerce, and the Master of Science in quantum computing. As well, 
coupled with the government's investment to expand the physical capacity at the University of Calgary's Vet Med School, an additional space of 15 new seats will be added to the University of Calgary Veterinary Medicine Program. And right here at home, at Mount Royal University, approximately $8 million will be allocated to provide 456 new spaces in three high-demand programs, including the Bachelor of Science program, Bachelor of Computer Information Systems, and Bachelor of Business Administration. And so in closing, as you can see, this historic investment of $84 million is key to ensuring that the Calgary region has the skilled workforce that it needs to thrive, and it will ensure that Calgarians and families have access to high-quality post-secondary programming right here at home. These significant investments into aviation, aircraft maintenance, quantum computing, engineering, and healthcare-related programming will ensure that Calgary and Alberta continues to be a great place to live, work, and do business. In closing, I encourage everyone to learn more about this largest targeted enrollment expansion in Alberta's history. And in, again, I'd like to extend my sincere gratitude to the faculty and staff at Mount Royal University for hosting us here today. And as well, also want to acknowledge uh, and another special guest who has joined us, Minister Copping, our Minister of Health, uh, which of course the University of Calgary is in his home riding. Thank you very much for being here today. Thank you very much, Minister. Now I'd like to invite Dr. Elizabeth Evans, Interim Provost and Vice President Academic of Mount Royal University to the podium to share a few words. Thank you, Kelly. And may I also extend a warm welcome to everyone to our flight school here at uh, the Springbank Hangar. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. It is my honor to be here today with Minister Nicolaides, as well as our fellow post-secondary leaders in Calgary for this important announcement from the Government of Alberta Ministry of Advanced Education. This is certainly welcome news for all of Alberta's post-secondary institutions as we support the future vision for Alberta's economy through enrollment expansion, increasing access for Alberta students. We know that the economic recovery from the pandemic has highlighted talent gaps globally and certainly in Alberta, <clears throat> including labor shortages in key sectors, an increase in long-term unemployment, employment gaps for youth, and barriers to entry for underrepresented groups. To address these challenges, collaboration among government, business, nonprofits, and post secondary institutions at the intersection of advanced education and employment is ongoing and critical. Access in post -sec to post secondary education is key to Alberta's economic future as our universities prepare graduates for success in the new economy and to engage as citizens in a world dependent on deep and critical thinkers. MRU values this funding for targeted enrollment expansion from the Government of Alberta, as it will enable us to add new seats in high demand programs in our business and computer science degrees. Currently, we are not able to accommodate the number of qualified applicants to these programs, and I know that our post-secondary partners at the University of Calgary, SAIT, Bow Valley College, Ambrose University, and St. Mary's University, all are, who are represented here today, face very similar challenges. These additional seats will give more opportunities to Alberta students to study in areas that are critical to Alberta's future and to a future that will allow those young uh, aspiring uh, individuals to stay here in the province and pursue their careers. The Alberta at Work initiative works hand in hand with Mount Royal University's emphasis on work integrated learning, which provides students with more opportunities to learn hands on from experts in their field and gain valuable work experience that helps them launch their careers when they graduate. 
Working together through initiatives like Alberta at Work, we can achieve great things as a university, as a post-secondary sector, and as a province. On behalf of Mount Royal University, we welcome the support for enrollment growth. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Evans. I'd now like to invite Dr. Ed McCauley, President and Vice Chancellor at the University of Calgary to the podium. Mr. Nicolades, Mr. Copping, honored guests it's, and members of the Calgary post-secondary system today, here today, it's really a pleasure to be here. Um, the province's recent budget contain important targeted investments for our post-secondary institutions. And these investments are not only good news for us, but more importantly, future students and the future of Alberta. To grow our economy and to help diversify it, we need more people with the knowledge that growing sectors need. And there's only one way that that happens. Graduating more students in colleges, polytechnics, and universities. And thanks to these recent investments, that's exactly what we're going to do as a system. The more than $61 million allocated for the University of Calgary will allow us to expand more than 1,300 spaces, as the minister mentioned, 1,082 in undergraduate spaces and 219 graduate spaces, to be exact. And these new seats come at a very critical time because demand for post-secondary spaces was particularly high in Calgary across all of our institutions. There were not enough seats, for example, at the University of Calgary, and we we're turning students away. That's not good for them, and it's also not good for our economy and for the future of the province of Alberta. But thanks to this funding, we will be able to say yes more often. We'll be make welcoming students in programs such as software engineering, in computer science, aerospace engineering, veterinary medicine to support Alberta's vital livestock industry, nursing, including programs which will enable rural residents and Indigenous peoples to learn where they live, and quantum computing. Some of these programs aren't only for new students, they're also for people already in the workforce, allowing them to upskill, to reskill, to meet the needs of today's economy using University of Calgary's innovative stackable certificates as well as online options. To give the idea of the potential of today's announcement, consider quantum computing. Already in the here and now, University of Calgary's leading work in this area led emphasis to make our city its quantum Canadian hub. That's gonna create 1,000 jobs right now in the city of Calgary and many, many more as the sector matures and grows to create new companies. By 2040, it's estimated that over $16.5 billion a year in revenue in Alberta alone, just in the area of quantum science. Because quantum science will underpin almost everything we do in the future in terms of secure communication, finance, energy, agriculture, transportation and logistics. It's not just about quantum computing, but what quantum science can do for our society. But the only way, and it's estimated about 26,000 jobs will come along with that investment. The only way we will have these jobs if we have the people with the knowledge to do them, which is why the funding to expand our Masters of Quantum Computing is so important. And the University of Calgary is a place to start something. And we're helping not only start Calgary's quantum sector, but helping to grow it into the future. So thank you again, Minister, for the government's support of the University of Calgary and our fellow post-secondary institutions. We're going to keep, as a collective, graduating students with the knowledge they need and the knowledge our economy needs to, to improve the lives of Albertans, both here today and for the future. So thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. McCauley. I would now like to call on our next speaker, Roy Dakin, Vice President, Corporate Services at SAIT.
Good morning, everyone. <coughs> Excuse me. Thank you, Kelly. It's a pleasure to be here today. SATE is pleased in this investment in new seats for higher demand programs in our <coughs> excuse me, School for Advanced Digital Technology, our School of Business, and our School of Transportation. They will offer more opportunity and access for students, which will in turn help to fuel economic prosperity in our province. Thanks to this investment, we continue to evolve to meet industry demand through programs and partnerships with key industries that position our graduates for career success. This unique approach to applied education has never been more vital than it is now in our workforce of today, which makes this morning's announcement equally important. SAIT's mandate of student-focused applied learning rings as true now as it did more than a century ago for all of our programs and pointedly SAIT's technology-focused aviation programs. A bit, of look a bit of a look back. Around the time the world's first transatlantic solo flight by Charles Lindbergh happened in 1927, aviation history was also being made at the Provincial Institute of Technology, now known as SAIT. Back then, there were 28 students enrolled in what they called an aeronautics evening course. This commitment to student success in aviation continued and grew exponentially over the years. First, fast forward many decades to 2004. SAIT opened the world-class Art Smith Aero Center for Training and Technology, the site for all of SAIT's technology programs, aviation programs. Today, the Aero Center features a 21,000 square foot hangar housing a multitude of aircraft, including airplanes, helicopters, and drones, as well as 13 labs and seven classrooms. The full-time programs in aircraft maintenance, engineers, technology, aircraft structures technician, and avionics technology, along with continuing education and industry training courses, is, SAIT's, is testament to SAIT's unyielding commitment to student success and our strong connection to industry. The demand for our highly skilled aviation students continues to outpace the number of graduates available. This is why this funding is so important. Again, through this investment from government in this and other state programs, we will continue providing these companies who make Alberta their home with future-proofed employees trained with the skills necessary to grow and continue to prosper. Again, thank you to the province for this additional funding. It is going to make a lot of students very, very happy. Thank you. Thank you so much. Our next speaker is Michael Crow, Vice President Academic of Bull Valley College. Well, a big thank you to Mount Royal University for hosting all of us today. It's wonderful to be here. Um, grateful to be here with uh, my colleagues and post-secondary leaders from across the city of Calgary. Uh, appreciate your leadership to all of your institutions. And it's nice to be able to celebrate this with you today. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, Minister Nicolaitis, thank you very much for this important announcement today. Um, not only did you see the need uh, and opportunity to expand seats in targeted sectors here in our post-secondary system in Alberta, and particularly here in Calgary, uh, but you took the courage to act on that need. And uh, today's announcement is, is historic and it is significant uh, for all of us and the future of our province. Um, this represents a significant investment from the government of Alberta to increase our post-secondary education capacity and to create more opportunities for learners uh, in providing access to first choice programs. Uh, for Bow Valley College, this represents uh, 426 new seats in, uh, across six high demand program areas, business administration, healthcare aid, practical nurse, information technology, software development, and entertainment arts. 
all growing sectors and, and needed, uh, where, where, where we need additional talent. And this creates an opportunity for us to, to help provide that talent. Some of these programs, like in healthcare, have been around for a long time. Uh, but we're seeing tremendous pressure on those sectors and this opportunity to expand seats and train new learners for healthcare careers comes at a, at a critical time for our province. Some of these programs are new uh, to Bow Valley College, including some of our technology programs in information technology and software development. We'd like to acknowledge and thank the Minister for inviting proposals to help expand new programs. This enables post-secondary institutions to respond to the needs of a, diverse, a diversifying economy uh, and, and, and to meet the needs of industries that are growing and innovating and that are looking to institutions like Bow Valley College and others here in Calgary for programs that are capable of producing job-ready graduates. And that's exactly what we're going to do. With policy and support, and funding support from the government of Alberta, uh, Bow Valley College and, and our other uh, partner institutions here in Calgary are very well positioned uh, to meet the labor market needs in these priority sectors, including in healthcare and in technology. Strengthening seat capacity is an important enabler that will uh, produce graduates that will not only participate in our labor market, but that will contribute to a diversified and growing economy right here in Alberta. This funding will help make our city and our province a better place to work and to live. So Minister, thank you very much to you and your colleagues in government for making this important investment in Alberta's future. Uh, this funding will certainly uh, allow our communities and our post-secondary sector to be sustainable well into the future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michael. I'd now like to invite Dr. Marie McTavish, Associate Dean of Business at Ambrose University. Good morning, everyone. Minister Nicolaides and Mr. Minister Copping and uh, post-secondary colleagues, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, we are small at Ambrose University, but this contribution, this funding, will have such a significant impact. Over this last year, I've had increasing numbers of alumni and employers come to us and say, we want more of your graduates. So although we do not have an aviation program, I can tell you that our graduates' careers are taking off. So that was supposed to go better than that. So at, at Ambrose University, we highly value this uh, grant and this funding and investment in the future leaders of Alberta. Actually, the future is not so far away. The, the uh, beneficiaries of this um, uh, announcement will be graduating actually in 2026, as early as that. And so we are excited to be a part of this. This funding is an important catalyst for growth for us and, as you've heard the other speakers say, for all of the Calgary region and across the province and allow us to hire an additional faculty member, also staffing for work integrated learning. So these are critical impetus for our growth and expansion of service and impact. Ambrose School of Business provides a transformative um, personalized education, which is carefully designed to develop values-based leaders for flourishing communities. Effective leaders with solid business knowledge and skills, pers uh, ethical perspectives, critical thinking skills, technical and analytical and interpersonal skills built upon a resilient hopefulness. This hopefulness is inspired by their confidence in their business and leadership skills and strong self-awareness and emotional and cultural intelligence that will give them a clear sense of values for their communities. A strong sense that they are well prepared to take on the post-COVID challenges in this ever-changing world in which we live. Our students engage in conversations about how to most effectively impact our communities through fulfilling lives and careers. Thanks to Alberta at Work, this targeted enrollment expansion grant, more students will have access to this Ambrose School of Business uh, Education, leading to meaningful jobs, specializing in data analytics, marketing, 
human resources, and accounting, all critical areas for business success, not only here and, and beyond. We support the development of creative and innovative mindsets by requiring every student to take an innovative, innovative and entrepreneurial thinking course. We strengthen Alberta's internationalization by developing values-based global business leaders through the Leadership in Global Context course. By studying business ethics and sustainability, environmental science, as well as business analytics, all students take all of these courses, and they will be equipped to affect positive leadership in our ever-changing consumer-driven world. And finally, with Ambrose's university uh, community focus, all students take a business and community course, whether it's focused on community development or nonprofit management. All of this integrative education is designed to incorporate work integrated learning. This funding, as I mentioned a moment ago, will support this growth into experiential learning, which we already have done so many times in our courses, where we do real-world consulting projects and so forth. And so I'd like to uh, conclude by saying thank you to Minister Nicolaides and the Ministry of Advanced Education for investing in Ambrose at University so that many more students can aspire to lead business for flourishing communities in Calgary and in the province. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. McTavish. Our next speaker is Tara Highland Russell, Provost and Vice President Academic of St. Mary's University. Minister Nicolaides and Minister Coppe, delighted to be here with my esteemed colleagues. We've been working together for a number of years across the Calgary environment to really strengthen and celebrate Calgary's post-secondaries. And we're going to be part of revitalizing not only the Calgary economy, but, but the provincial economy. And a key part is this targeted enrollment expansion funding. At St. Mary's, this is going to support an integrative and laddered pathway in social responsibility and critical entrepreneurship. We've been turning away students interested in management studies, and this funding will fill a gap connecting management studies with public policy, social justice, and leadership. St. Mary's is uniquely positioned to support a range of intellectual competencies required of a complex global economic environment, and especially in the wake of COVID, when we need forward thinking and hope. These funded seats offer a reskilling and laddering approach with multiple access and exit points for learners interested in the intersection between entrepreneurship and civil society. Students will be well prepared for jobs. These courses align well with key industry identified outcomes, including civic knowledge, critical and creative thinking, information and quantitative literacy, intercultural knowledge, visual and social media literacy, and ethical reasoning. Student demand is clear, and many of our students will be very happy with this announcement today. And feedback from community and business partners indicate enthusiastic support for the pathway. We're grateful to the Ministry for increased funding to expand access to this in-demand program that will help build the future of Alberta. Thank you, Tara. Thank you, everyone, for your remarks. And now, last but most certainly not least, I'd like to invite Olga Kolodichenko to the podium. Olga is a Bachelor of Science student in the Computer Science Program at Mount Royal University. And like most students at Mount Royal, she is taking part in a valuable work placement term for spring and summer. We're happy to have Olga to share, share the importance of this news of funding for student access to post-secondary in the Calgary region. Thank you, and good morning, Minister and assembled guests. Uh, well, as I was introduced, my name is Olga Koldachenko, and I'm pleased to be here today for this announcement from the Government of Alberta. As a student, and for future students, I'm grateful for this funding increase. I'm looking forward to starting a career after graduating from MRU, so I appreciate the focus of the Alberta at Work Initiative for students. We are the future of this province. 
I'm looking for, uh, I'm working towards a bachelor's degree in computer science. After graduating, I hope to join an industry which drives innovation, pushing the boundaries of what technology is capable of in our ever increasingly connected world. Mount Royal is known for its student-focused approach that teaches us what we will need to succeed in the workforce, including a focus on work-integrated learning. My own co-op placements have taught me skills which cannot be learned in a classroom. During my first term, I worked for MRU itself, a peak behind the curtain as I brought student insight into the equity, diversity, and inclusion initiative within the Faculty of Science and Technology. As I built a website, I learned crucial soft skills through research, meetings, and presentations. Today, I'm working for Alberta Health Services with the Robotic Process Automation Division, learning to apply those skills in an industry where people come first, where I can support the Albertan community by making the jobs of healthcare workers simpler. This experience has given me skills and confidence to enter the workforce and make a real contribution. Thank you so much for having me here today. Thank you so much, Olga. It's very clear that we are at an airport right now. <laughs> there is a, a little bit of noise in the background. The, the investment announced here today will help Mount Royal University and our fellow institutions in the Calgary region provide more spaces for students and, and enable all of us to continue to do what we do best. Thank you, Minister Nicolaides, and thank you again to all of our speakers and guests. This concludes the formal portion of today's announcement. Thank you all for joining us and enjoy the rest of your day. Um, we will now begin the media Q&A portion of our announcement. It doesn't look like there's any questions on the phone, so we'll go to the mic here in person. Uh, the minister, please. Mike Symington, CBC News, Calgary. Minister, could, could I speak to you, please? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Minister, two years ago, these same institutions, a little more than two years ago, took some severe cuts. I've been at many demonstrations. We, we have almost the second highest tuition in the average tuition in Canada. Now, now we're giving some money back to these same institutions. Is it correct that government is prioritizing where funding should go? Sorry, for programs? I, I, just a little bit of noise in the background. Can you just repeat the last part uh, of your it, question? Is it right that government is prioritizing where funding is going after the, the severe cuts these institutions took two years ago? And of course, I'm at many demonstrations. Uh, students, we have the second highest average tuition in the country. So my point to you is, is when, when will we see a return to funding? And is it right that it's prioritized by business through your government after those cuts? Sure. Well, um uh, firstly, I, just perhaps a quick point of clarification on, on tuition levels. So currently today in Alberta, uh, tuition levels um, are, are not, I, I think you mentioned it, the second highest. We're, That's right. Yeah, uh, we're, we're not the second highest in, in the country. I can't remember precisely where we stack up with respect to other provinces. Third or but, fourth, maybe? Uh, but we are, um, we are below the national average. Um, uh, the average undergraduate tuition level today in Alberta is below the national average. So, so we're pretty on par with, okay. with rest, where, where the rest of the country is at. Um, and with respect to you know, some, of the, some of the funding reductions over the past couple of years, I mean, we've uh, seen that we've operated at higher funding levels than other provinces. Uh, and so there, there needed to be a correction there. And uh, Coming to today, uh, I think that gives us a good foundation to build off of. You know, we, when we originally developed the targeted enrollment expansion initiative, we had uh, allocated approximately 171 million over three years. We were expecting and anticipating that we'd be able to create 7,000 spaces across Alberta. Uh, but at the end of the day, the remarkable proposals that we received from our post-secondary institutions, we're going to be doing almost 10,000 spaces. And the, in, in terms of, um, and, and that speaks to the, you know, the, the efficiency of our institutions and their cost effectiveness. When, as it relates to the particular programs, of course, we, 
we have to be very particular about how those dollars are being allocated. We want to ensure first and foremost that we're reducing wait lists wherever possible in programs such as in, in aviation, in veterinary medicine, in business, in many areas, there are wait lists. And as some of our speakers said today, I don't think we should be turning those students away. And so we wanted to look very objectively at programs that have significant wait lists uh, and as well that also have high demand in the economy. So we can, we can you know, kill two birds with one stone and uh, address some of those wait lists and help produce more graduates in areas that are in demand. And so uh, that's, that's the, the primary intent of, of today. And do you see uh, in the in the near future expanding your uh, your budgeting to all educational universities, all post secondary education? I mean, they're all struggling. Let's yeah. let's be frank about it. I, the students are struggling. These institutions are struggling. Can, can these institutions expect to see more funding, operational funding, particularly in the next two years, or or do you have a timeline on that? Yeah. Well, I, I can't I can't uh, predict, of course, uh, the the future. What what, what I do know is that uh, already the targeted enrollment initiative is proving successful. As I mentioned, we were hoping to create 7,000 spaces, but looks like we're going to be able to create 10,000 spaces. So it's already proving incredibly effective. And, um, you know, I, I can't presuppose what, what the future will look like, uh, but uh, I think there's, there's a strong desire and demand, you know, from my part, and I think the the government as a whole to help more students access high demand programs, be able to attend our world-class post-secondary institutions and, and go on to strong careers afterwards. So uh, that, that this initiative extends over the, the period of three years and you know, if it proves effective, uh, we'll, we'll have to reevaluate and uh, already looking pretty strong, but we'll reevaluate at that time and uh, again, uh, uh, three years down the road, uh, what a future uh, minister or government uh, will do is you know, outside of my purview, unfortunately. Thank you very much. Mr. No worries. Thank you. And that'll wrap up the media Q&A portion of our announcement. Thank you very much, everyone. Great. Thank you.